From the reveal trailer in 2021 to the PlayStation showcase that we got back in May, we already know about a ton of villains that are going to be popping up in Marvel Spider-Man 2. But I really wanted to go over some of the villains that I want to see the most because there's still plenty of members of the Spider-Man rogues gallery that have yet to show up in either Spider-Man PS4 or Spider-Man Miles Morales. So we're going over in this video nine villains that I think need to be in Marvel Spider-Man 2. But before we do so, if you cannot wait to get your hands on this game, October 20th cannot get here soon enough if you're hyped scroll down hit the thumbs up button share your hype with me let's go for 5,000 likes and with that being said let's start things off with a bit of a deep cut actually and I'm going to start things off with Starling some of you might not even be familiar with this name so I'm going to give you guys the breakdown Starling is actually Tiana Toomes and is the granddaughter to one vulture Adrian Toomes and in the comic book Starling is actually a Miles Morales villain and interestingly enough what they did in the comics that one point was make starling sort of like what black cat is to peter but i would like if in marvel spider-man 2 they just took tiana tombs and made her full villain mode and made it so that she was out for revenge on either of the spider man now why is it that i say revenge well if we go back to 2018 when spider-man ps4 first released you might remember that there was some dialogue in there especially from a j jonah jameson podcast that adrian tombs vulture he was sick he had spinal cancer and that's a part of the reason actually why he even joined the sinister six doc ock said that he would help find a cure for his sickness in return for him trying to help take down spider-man as well as you know breaking him out of the raft and we know through that boss battle with electro and vulture that we beat them and send them back to the raft in fact their names are on the list when you look at craven's tablet so we could see a situation here where the vulture passes away through the events of marvel spider-man 2 and that would definitely piss off the granddaughter of one adrian tombs and starling motivations would be kicked into overdrive and also you could totally reason with her you know doc ock was trying to figure something out to help vulture and instead spider-man's like no i'm gonna beat the crap out of you and then just send you back to prison go ahead good luck with your spinal cancer it's it's actually really messed up the more that you think about it and i want to continue with miles morales villains so the next villain on my list is armadillo and if starling had a crazy good motivation we're going to an opposite extreme this time around and i would like armadillo to pop up just to be a nice little villain of the week for us to fight i mean funny enough if you watched across the spider-verse armadillo actually has a little cameo in that movie so that was pretty great to see and honestly just the way that it's handled in that movie i would kind of like to see something similar to that in the game just a villain that's there for a little side mission we fight against armadillo we get to see the insomniac design for the villain and just get rid of him real quick i know it's weird to put a villain like that on this list but you need to have villain of the weeks for spider-man that's just the way this world works you gotta have the big threats that they're gonna have a tough time taking down but at the same time you need those villains where they got no problem beating them think back to the spider-man 2 movie game the first time we fight mysterio in that convenience store and then it's just like a one hit and he's done that sort of stuff is great it's what makes spider-man spider-man you know the fact that sometimes he can just deal with these crazy villains in one hit moving on though the next villain i have on my list is man wolf now we know the symbiote is going to be playing a huge factor in marvel spider-man 2 but we don't know exactly what the origin of the symbiote is i talked about this in another video but it seems likely that the origin for the symbiote in Spider-Man 2 is that it's going to come from space and if that ends up being the case well then John Jameson the son of J. Jonah Jameson could be the pilot of the spacecraft that brings the symbiote back to earth and who does John Jameson become in the comic books that's right none other than Manwolf. J. Jonah Jameson is going to play a bigger role in Marvel Spider-Man 2 you can mark my words on that from the Spider-Man 2 prequel comic it was shown that he's bought back the Daily Bugle he's got a bigger position there again so I think it's going to be a lot less just the facts podcast cast with J. Jonah Jameson and a lot more Daily Bugle related stuff with J. Jonah. And the conflict there between J. Jonah Jameson, Spider-Man, or either of the Spider-Men, and then of course John Jameson as Man-Wolf could be either really funny or really compelling, and I'm here for either of those. Just the way that I'm here for you guys with all this Marvel Spider-Man 2 content, so go ahead and subscribe and turn on those notifications so that you'll be immediately notified when the next Spider-Man video goes live. Although to be honest, I would like if it's more leaning towards the compelling side of things, because I think J. Jonah is good as a funny little character they do some good gags with the character but i would like to see some more serious moments moving on from that though a villain that i think should definitely be taking advantage of the playstation 5 hardware is hydra man i saw 
saw some people complaining about the water effects from that gameplay demo and i agree you know we do need to step it up just a little bit but imagine if we had a whole water villain to fight i mean puddlegate from spider-man ps4 don't even know what's gonna hit it if we have hydro man as one of the villains to fight in marvel spider-man 2 i want to see puddles everywhere i want to see reflections everywhere but also just imagine like i said technologically what they could do with a villain like hydro man if they're taking advantage of the ps5 all the different effects that could take place you know the different attacks that hydro man would throw at you and then as well you know i'm not even joking if there are a whole bunch of puddles and we got ray tracing on those reflections that would look so good and to just keep that train going on villains that would just be in the game strictly to take advantage of the ps5 sandman is also on that list listen poor sandman's out there trapped in a tiny little vial of according to the backpacks that you collected at Spider-Man PS4. And I have to imagine that the dude's gonna break out of that thing at one point or another. And you already know that I want the boss battle to go down exactly how it should when you fight Sandman. First, he is to your size. And then after absorbing a whole bunch of sand, we fight a giant sand monster. Think about the set piece. If we have Miles and Peter swinging around together, trying to destroy, you know, his arms, trying to get him back down to size, you know, throwing water at him. Imagine if it was him and Hydra Man fighting you at the same time, the possibility abilities here are endless and sandman's just one of the more iconic villains in the spider-man rogues gallery so really he should be showing up in this game it's just like an obligation at this point point. and if he's not going to be in spider-man 2 well then he's on my wish list for spider-man 3 following that though i got the spot and this has become a lot more of an obvious choice now than it would have been a year ago after across the spider-verse the spot has cemented himself amongst the household names when you think about the spider-man rogues gallery not to mention that that movie did not want to make that villain seem entirely like a joke in the introduction it made it seem like he was going to be a villain of the week easy to deal with but throughout that film as things start to progress you really see how menacing and how powerful the spot can be and i think insomniac could do just as good a job with that villain and showcasing that level of power if they were to put him in their games plus it's just good brand synergy some people now are going to think about the spot as a miles morales villain so having him be exactly that within the games universe will work the spot's just a force to be reckoned with if you do the right things for that villain he could absolutely be amongst the most powerful villains that spider-man will ever face continue Continuing though, we also got Morbius on the list. Yes, it's Morbin time and some people might not even recognize that Morbius may be in the game already. You see, there is a character in Spider-Man PS4 that's actually pretty integral to the story by the name of Dr. Morgan Michaels. And he is a huge help in creating a cure for the devil's breath disease that we have to deal with towards the end of the game. The thing that actually leads to Aunt May's demise. But what you might not realize is that Dr. Morgan Michaels is an alias for Morbius. I kind of feel bad for Insomniac because if this is going to be a villain to show up in Spider-Man PS4, it will probably predate all the memes that have popped up from that movie and if morbius shows up in spider-man 2 well we're going to be having a little bit of deja vu from what happened when that film hit theaters i dread it but also i am very much looking forward to it speaking though from a gameplay standpoint if we talk about the actual boss battle and what they could do there this would be a great opportunity for insomniac to inject just a little bit of horror into their game they were already hinting at doing stuff like that already and that gameplay demo from the playstation showcase you know that moment when you're creeping through the hallways as miles morales and there's that jump scare with the lizard skin Clearly, Insomniac wants to inject just a little bit of horror into Spider-Man 2, and they can definitely go the distance if Morbius is a villain. And then, you know, I have to include Mysterio on this list. Mysterio is such a major Spider-Man villain, and there are so many different things that they can do from gameplay and story with Mysterio if they were to put him in Marvel Spider-Man 2. I mean, look back at the trippiness that went down when you got stung by Scorpion in Spider-Man PS4 and think about how much crazier it could get if you have all of Mysterio's illusions. We already know Mysterio exists canonically within the Spider-Man PS4 universe. I mean, we beat up some person dressed up as Mysterio for Halloween during that mission in the first game. And I believe there was even a collectible from the backpacks that was like a broken piece of the fishbowl helmet. So Mysterio exists within Spider-Man PS4's universe. 
and could totally show up in Spider-Man 2 to wreak some havoc and mess with our minds. How cool would it be if we could essentially get that crazy Mysterio scene from Spider-Man Far From Home, but this time around, we actually have the controller in our hands and we're playing through it. And the final villain to round out my list of nine villains that I want to see show up in Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is the technical half-brother of one Sergei Kravenov, the Kraven, who is the main villain or one of the main villains in Spider-Man 2. That's right, Chameleon. And I don't even think I need to give you much of an explanation beyond what I just said. This character is technically the half-brother to Kraven, who is one of the biggest villains that's going to be featured within Spider-Man 2. And we already know what Chameleon could do to mess with both our Spider-Man and the people that they love. I mean, clearly, if he's disguising himself as Spider-Man, J. Jonah Jameson's going to have a field day on that one. Now, I believe there is a reference to Chameleon within the first game at some point, so they don't specifically mention that he's the half-brother to Kraven, but that's something that they can introduce as a twist if we were to come back in this game. Or, you know, I mean, it was something that was offhand. It's not something that a lot of people would remember, so maybe they can just retcon it if it comes to it. I guess we'll have to wait and see, but again, there's really not much of an explanation that's needed to be provided as to why I think Chameleon would be a great villain to be included within Spider-Man 2. And that rounds out the nine villains that I think need to show up in this game. But the best thing about these kinds of videos is my list is not definitive. I want to hear what you guys have to say in the comments section below. What villains do you want to see the most in Marvel Spider-Man 2? Sound off with your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. I've been Caboose, and I'll see you guys later.